Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another AMA. So today we're going to have a very special and interesting AMA. It's a panel AMA with senior leaders from uh, Incubator, uh, Union, and Union. So we have thank you. Hello guys. Hi guys. Hello, hello Hi. everyone. Hello, you guys. Hi, Jay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I love everyone's background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so laggy. Okay. Yeah, I think you're, you're okay, lagging a little bit. Can you hear me well? Ah, yes. Okay, now. So I see. Um, okay, so let's start. Can't have the better stable, stable than you now. He has better stable <laughs> signal than you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, poor me. So, hello guys. So, I'm Amy from Gamefire.org, the host of today's AMA. So, it's such an honor for me to be in the panel today. Uh, but before we go into the topic today, uh, I'm going to introduce our inspiring speaker on this panel. So, today we have um, founder of IST Lab, an incubator and advisor for Star Projects. Hi, T. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm, I'm glad so, to be here. Yeah, glad to see you. So we have Dan Wang, CIO of YGCC. Hi, Dan. Hello, everyone. Good to be here. Excited. Yeah, and last but not least, we have Hi, founder and CEO of Epic War Game. Hi, hi. Yo, guys. We're just hi. happy to see hi. you guys today. Yeah, awesome. Great to have all of you here. So uh, first, to let our audience who are watching the live to get to know more about you, can you introduce yourself as well as your experience in uh, blockchain field as a whole and in gaming in particular? Who start first? Um, <laughs> 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 I'm just, we just waiting for your signal. <laughs> so let's start with um, Ben from WGP. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll be first. I'll lead off. Um, so, you know, my background, uh, I started in uh, finance, investment banking and consulting. And then about uh, 11 years ago, I joined uh, the gaming industry. Uh, I helped start Riot Games, the publisher of League of Legends, Valorant, Team Fight Tactics, Wild Rift, <clears throat> uh, and the series Arcane, uh, the anime series. Um, I used to lead international publishing, uh, global publishing. And then uh, when we were expanding very fast, I led our global expansion and infrastructure teams. Uh, and then after we got acquired by Tencent, uh, I moved to China and uh, led uh, operations as a COO for Riot China. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, right before COVID kind of hit, uh, I left uh, uh, the corporate life, the corporate gaming life, and decided to focus on the intersection of blockchain and gaming. Um, and so I did a lot of advisory investments uh, into blockchain projects uh, in the gaming space back then. Um, and last year, we started our first uh, GameFi and a Web3 infrastructure fund called Infinity Ventures. Uh, and with Infinity Ventures, we partnered with Gabby and the YGG team to create the first sub-DAO of YGG, which is called YGG Southeast Asia. Uh, our sub-DAO is dedicated to servicing players specifically in Southeast Asia. Um, and so I transferred uh, my full-time job here to YGGC as our chief investment officer and our chief gaming officer. Um, That's so great. Yeah. So next, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, my name is T and I've been working in the software industry for uh, like nearly 10 years. And I began to work in the blockchain field for uh, nearly four years. 
you, you know, I, I began to, to you know, at, at Tatlis, the IST Labs, more than three years ago, with the mission to bring uh, regular users to the blockchain. And, and since then, uh, we've been researching a lot about how to lower the barriers for, for regular users to, to adopt blockchain technology. So, you know, last year we, because I'm, I think GameFi, you know, game in particular is very uh, uh, suitable uh, application, use case of games. Uh, a blockchain. That's why last year we we began to incubate a few games even before the gaming chain started, before Axie Infinity beca became a global pheno phenomenon. Uh, we began to incubate it some incubate some games, and then a few months later, when games uh, became an, a chain, uh, we already incubated a few games. So we we launched them and got a a, a lot of success. <laughs> And that's why uh, we go on to incubate uh, a few games and become one of the leading uh, launch paths on the market. And so for now, we're still working on, on many other initiatives uh, to bring more players, especially the, the traditional game players, into uh, the blockchain games and convert them to blockchain game players. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So last but not least, we have Hi. Hi, guys. My name is Chase. Hi. I'm the creative force, the first creator of Epic Worlds, the first decentralized APS open game platform that we want to allow everyone they can create the NFTs and the game mod in the game, inside the game, uh, based on our artificial intelligence, intelligence system. And my background is uh, in the AI computer science, and I am also the certified Big Four advisor. I used to work in Deloitte, Boston, and then back to Ernst and Young, Singapore, Vietnam, before getting to investment uh, sec segment. I got like more than ten years of experience creating innovative solution for business and investor, and also uh, one of the first. Um, adapter with Bitcoin since 2012 uh, with my technical skill in corporate finance and AI. So uh, I want to solve complex problem and want to make the better game based on the blockchain and on ensure the Epic World can be the next generation of the game fight, seven game fight two. And for us, the team behind Epic World have the international experience in video game, uh, gaming industry and blockchain experience. So together, we want to create the game with the best mechanic, uh, high graphic, and very good gameplay that people have never seen before, just like Doom or Titanfall. And if you are a fan of the first-person shooting strategy and role-play game action, so you are at the right place now. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, you guys. Um, so the AMA today, the topic is about GameFi 2.0 and its evolution. So the term GameFi has been a buzzword since 2020. So blockchain gaming has proven to be one of the hostest sectors and, you know, attract a lot of big names and British investors in crypto from 2021 to now. So everyone talk about GameFi, but not everyone fully understand it. So can you guys share your understanding about GameFi? Um, what do you think about GameFi at this moment and in the next year? So I would love to start with um, uh, Anhai. Yeah. Yeah. So in my opinion, in recent two years, the popularity of blockchain game has getting harder and higher. And you can see for from my understanding, GameFi is a bridge that connect game and blockchain. It's just like the decentralized um, platform that provide game developers, gamers, investors, and other uh, stakeholders with the value as service of the tokenomic games. So it's just like the gaming ecosystem that's based, based on the blockchains and provide a decentralized uh, efficient and fair and transparent gameplays. 
um, that allow anyone who, who want to play and earn uh, from over the world at uh, some initial cost and uh, with the less technology barriers and like game fight experience experience around of the explosion last year uh, including very pet project like ACs mana or sand we just like hit the very good chat boss last year but also fell over the recently uh, I think there will be the more fluctuation in coming month for game five so in my opinion the future value position of the own game projects will be evaluated carefully in this year so it's very important of this trend and it would important uh, to have game five will attract more people attention and not just only for the crypto but also for the non crypto players so it will be open a new kind of like esport game platform based on the blockchain technologies which all will become the next generation of the game five second thank you yeah so what do you think about it then yeah you know it's, it's interesting um a lot of people call it GameFi or Web3 Gaming, um, Play to Earn. Uh, I actually, I just call it gaming. It's just gaming. It's a new iteration of gaming. Uh, and it's just a new feature that we have in gaming. If you think historically, the gaming industry has changed so many times with um, pay to play, then to free to play, then social uh, gaming, um, you know, like and every single time, it really wasn't a new type of gaming. It's just better features in the overall gaming industry. Um, and that's why I, I actually, I don't like to use the word GameFi because it's just gaming. Um, and it just mm -hmm. has additional features that empower players now to have mm -hmm. digital assets, right? Uh, for them to actually mm -hmm. own and earn um, some value for the time that they're putting into a game. Um, and I really think that's what, uh, you know, GameFi, uh, this new wave of gaming is really all about. Um, you know, I've seen several different waves uh, of this new uh, Web3 gaming uh, come to play. Maybe about a year ago, uh, we had early adopters uh, first to market uh, with more maybe simple game design, core game loops, um, but still fun, uh, launch quickly and embrace the concept of ownership inside of a game. Um, and these, these early adopters were rewarded for bringing this value to players very early on. Uh, what you're seeing now uh, with Epic War and a lot of other games out there, uh, you know, Phantom Galaxies, you know, Time, uh, et cetera, is you're seeing a lot of games now transition to uh, one of the next like three different waves of gaming that I see coming. Um, one of the next waves of gaming is uh, multi-IP, multi-game mode platforms. Um, and so you can think of these platforms as almost like a social layer uh, that multiple games plug into so that players can transition from one type of gaming mode or gaming genre or one type of gaming IP to another without having to leave the ecosystem, without having to leave their friends, their community that they formed within that platform. And so we've seen a lot of these pop up, a lot of these projects pop up, um, and actually some of the largest gaming companies in the world, for example, come to us, you know, uh, the, the publishers of Summoner's War, The Walking Dead, uh, you know, other AAA titles, they've completely gone all in crypto and they've launched the uh, C2X platform where they're moving all of their four or 500 IPs onto one gaming platform so that players can enter the platform and play any single one of their IPs. Um, and I see that starting to become a trend now. Uh, so that's kind of one of the next waves. Um, another next wave that I see happening is a UGC, uh, embracing user-generated content, put even more power back in the hands of players. Uh, you see this in Web2 gaming already with like Roblox, Minecraft, et cetera. And it's very, very popular. Yeah. And now because uh, players, they have ownership over the assets they create in a game. 
actually allowing them to become a, a creator in a game and being able to monetize that effectively is even more powerful than it was in Web 2. And that's why I see recently also a lot of UGC focused, creator focused games uh, start to come to the market. Um, and yeah. lastly, the, the, the last wave of games is these very AAA complex uh, SLG MMO type games. Um, you know, they they have a longer time to market because they're much more complex to play. They're almost like, you know, hopping into Ready Player One or, you know, Free Guy or something like that. Um, the entire universe is available. You can do anything you want in this universe. Uh, you could farm, you could craft, you could PVP, you could PVE, uh, anything you want to do. You could do politics um, and these type of open ecosystems. Um take a lot more development and a lot more care to fully uh, launch because it's so much more complex. But the beauty of it is with each of these waves of gaming, it's training players to be able to adapt into this new environment where they have rights of ownership over the assets in game. They're able to engage in different types of game modes, different play styles. They're able to create within this game. And all of these are core skill sets that the players will need when they play these big AAA MMO or open world titles where you can come in and be anyone you want to be, do anything you want to do. And really, I yeah. see all these game modes transition uh, and adapt and enter into this like final wave of uh, GameFi, which is, yeah. Uh, that, so that's kind of what I see coming and uh, all the different types of game modes and uh, uh, waves of gaming that are happening right now. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, uh, Dan have a long explanation about GameFi. So long story short, so I can understand that GameFi is a combination of game, DeFi components, and in-game accept ownership, like NFT, skin, or real estate. So uh, we truly can see that GameFi is the sector that are applying and doing wonders and bring real value to the real life. So uh, I see a lot of like traditional games such as LOL and League of Legends, uh, Bucci and uh, Warcraft uh, have happen still not yet uh, joined this market. So what if what if they joined? Personally, I think it's just a matter of times. Yeah. So um, hi. Uh, as we all know that DeFi. Uh, 1.0 uh that's we have the hard fork defi 2.0 was born to tackle the problem so uh the overs and that the overs and unsolved so game five 2.0 kind of similar so with the position as a ceo of uh, a epic war so a shooting game using blockchain technology can you share more about like um, um whether your game um is using uh game game five 2.0 to support the game or like what your understanding about game 5 2.0 uh hello uh, let me end with uh yeah we just see that recently there are many game game 5 blockchain game just experience, experience the outbreak uh is they are facing some difficulty just like the poor gameplays, unsustainable economic model, and lacking governance. So that's what make them just fall down in the role. So the, from, in my opinion, the release of the new game generation, Game 5 Second or Threat, Game 5 3, like Web 3 Gaming, so will bring a new set of experience in the field of game with a purpose of improving the gameplay experience and meeting the new market from traditional game players. That's what we never touched before. And resolving issue regarding sustainable economic model and resolving all the governance issue that just keep the recent blockchain game unstable. So that's why we believe the futures of game five is brighter than ever. And for us, the ABS game we all know that one of the most popular genes in the world and have a very large number of fan players. It's no wonder because like, it's have the last number of like um Corner Strike, Doom, Titan 4, Halos, and but most of the famous game is decentralized, 
So it's been like everything is designed by the game producers and the digital assets are limited in the game. So the first, the first generation of the blockchain game already unlocked by using the blockchain technologies. So now for the second wave is we will improve the gaming and earning experience. So that's what we expect more. So yeah. for, yeah, I just, let, let me add up. So for in general, um, the next generation game five will support the game with the out like um, revolutionary concept to make players become the next builder of the game. So they not just only play and earn in the game, they also become the next creator of the game by contributing their ideas, design their NFTs and make it playable in the game. And also they can use that to trade in the marketplace. So they will have more power in the game and it will help us bring a lot more, more gamers, like traditional gamers who are really tired of the traditional game, uh, even this have very good profit, have a triple A's into the uh, new wave of the crypto game market. And with the much better player experience, freedom and uh, earning than traditional game ever. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, great to hear. So you guys, if uh, you guys feel interested about Epic World after this AMA, you can head over to the officer website to give the tennis a go or stay updated with their latest news. So um, I have a question for Dan and, and T. Uh, with the explosion and the revelation of hundreds of game projects, so what do you think the game project need to be successful in the current market situation? So I think you mentioned hundreds of games out uh, mm -hmm. out there for, for game five, but I think it's natural that for hundreds of games and only a few successful, it happened in traditional games. So now for, for blockchain games, it has to be so also, it's healthy. And, and secondly, I think it's already hard to be uh, successful with traditional games, it's even harder to, to become a successful game five project because you need to, to be creatively apply the blockchain technology into the game. So, so for me, to be successful, a blockchain game also need to, to be fun. People will need to play for fun. It's natural in, in, in gaming. And, and secondly, you you need to you know you know at and already Dan already mentioned you need to plug into some kind of platform because for 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 middle except for very large game middle games they need to be part of a larger platform because first you will need some platform or some uh, some services to help you to bring traditional players to the blockchain games and help to convert the traditional game players into blockchain games. And second, uh, you, you need a way to make the game tokens and assets to be uh, usable across the platform. Because for, for a single game, uh, it have lifetime, it have life cycle and, and when it's much more healthier if the game items can be used in, in, in the platform, not in a single game. So, so I, I think we need a, a robust platform for the games and we need uh, the game to be fun and we need uh, an, a creative application of blockchain technology uh, into the game. That's my opinion. Yeah. How about you, Dan? Yeah, no, that was, uh, it was good. And I learned a lot from kind of uh, what you just said. Um, I'd say, I think what I would add on is um, 
to make a game successful in the current market market, the studio needs to be very uh, adaptable, very flexible um, because um, games now mirror a real economy much more closely than previous games. Um, you know, previous games like Eve online or world of Warcraft had in-game economy, but now it's very real because the barriers to extracting the value are much lower. Um, the time to adapt is much shorter than beforehand. So uh, in order to be successful uh, kind of in this market, especially with so many games going on, uh, beyond being fun to play, beyond plugging into a platform, um, beyond making, you know, uh, uh, delight for the users, empowering them with assets um, and giving them creator, uh, creator opportunities, you have to also be a very quick and nimble studio. Um, the normal development time in the traditional like Web2 gaming industry you know, studios can go and build and develop for four or five years to finally create one product and launch. That will die in this market, uh, right? In this current state of the industry, every three months, every six months, new features need to be coming out, new game modes need to be coming out. And it's based on feedback from your audience. Because now, beforehand, if an audience invested money or a gamers invested into a, a game, you know, they they don't want to leave because it's hard to leave. All of their assets are stuck in the game. All of their time and money is stuck in the game. It's harder for them to leave. And so game studios can take longer to respond and listen to the players. But now, these days, if the players are unhappy, if the community is unhappy, instantly they can withdraw their assets. They can leave the game. They can go to a game that's actually listening to them and building what they want. And that's why I think what makes it a little bit unique, what uh, studios need to do is be very adaptable and listen to their community and make sure to integrate feedback very quickly because things are changing so fast. If you don't listen to them, then players can abandon a game so quickly. And so I think that's what will make uh, game projects successful in the current market situation. You unmute, Amy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just back to the basic uh, community support and games should be compelling and fun for us and also have like a uh, good quality, good story inside. So, yeah. And um, T, we have talked about the criteria that game producers should focus on for their game. So as an um, like, for ICT Lab and leading, incubating and advising platform for blockchain projects. So what are you doing to support and contributing, contribute to the blockchain game industry? Uh, you are muted. Yeah, we, we work on many initiatives to, to help the the gaming industry in general and and you know in last year we, we've been uh kind of uh, we have some success in uh, helping the games before they launch for example we have attracting investor for for the rounds and launch ido selling nft etc but you know for now it's critical for games to attract the players and that, that's what we are working on but 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 you know the the main uh, concern now is how to make a game sustainability so so you know there are two ways uh, of making them sustainability first one is uh, we um, it, it needs to be some kind of open uh, economy. For example, a user can contribute the content, the third party can contribute the content, so it's much more sustainable compared to a closed economy. And, and secondly, uh, uh, it, it should be uh, some way, uh, you know, for a single game, 
the life cycle might, might end after one or two years, but as a platform, it has to continue. It's like the people on the earth, the, the, the elders will die, but younger uh, are born. So we think that, uh, we need to, to make a platform that naturally accept some games to die. But the asset in game is still there and be inherited in, in, in other games in the ecosystem. So that's, that's what we are trying to build a game file to, to be, become a, a game platform with that kind and become a, a kind of nah, gaming hub, the, uh, like a Steam for blockchain games. Mm -hmm. And we are also building, working with many uh, traditional game publishers to try to, to convert traditional game players into blockchain games. So we are building a, a, a workforce marketplace because we believe that uh, it's not uh, philosophically correct to, to have both fun and earning at the same time sustainable, sustainability. So we need to work for, for money and we need to pay for fun. That's why we, we target something else that we, we will build a kind of a workforce for, for games and for metaverse and trying to convert traditional games player into uh, blockchain games. And we're also building a platform to organize uh, the tournaments, both pro level and uh, community level. So we can help all the games to organize uh, the tournaments and to attract fans and do many things. So that's uh, eventually we, we're trying to go the, the way traditional games already went, but in the new inside of blockchain games, that's what we're trying to build. Mm, yeah, like um, you have to create, build a an ecosystem surrounding that game, like yeah, make the game bigger than just only a game. Yeah. So um, for your information, you guys, uh, Gamefire.org is an all-in-one discovery gaming hub for game guilds in Metaverse. And especially we are opening the gamer pool uh, just for gamers who want to earn token of their favorite games on Gamefire. Yeah, we um, we like. Yeah, we have that with no staking required, just buy ticket and experience the game and purchase the token. Yeah, very simple and easy for a gamer. So you guys can click to our um, media social link in the description box. Yeah, to know more about our our uh, like developments. So then, so AKA uh, one of the leading game guilds in the crypto sphere. So, uh, what are the opportunity perks that uh, YGT brings to player as well as the game makers? Oh, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. Look at, you know, for us at YGG Southeast Asia and the entire YGG ecosystem in general, um, you know, our main focus is to empower players and give as many opportunities to players that want to uh, play, but also earn some sort of a living off of it. Um, you know, our mission statement is to be the largest and most sustainable and most lucrative uh, guild uh, in Southeast Asia. Um, and we do that because, you know, for us, what we do is we help players figure out what's the best fit for them or what type of games. And so we hire very local um uh, experts uh, in each of the regions. So basically for Southeast Asia, we have a country manager for each country with local uh, scholar managers, uh, play buddies, um, and game experts in each country uh, to help onboard new scholars. Perhaps they're not new gamers, but they're new to Web3. Or they're in Web3, but they're new to gaming as well. We help provide the onboarding assistance to overcome that barrier of entry into kind of Web3 gaming. Um, I'm sure all of you remember the first time you created a wallet, the first time you bought an NFT, the first time you bridged from one chain to the other chain. It's very stressful. It's very intimidating. Um, you know, I, I keep thinking I'm going to screw something up and lose a bunch of money. Well, uh, as a guild, 
part of our responsibility is to help walk people through that process so that they understand and feel more comfortable with the entire uh, uh, ecosystem of uh, both Web3 and specifically Web3 gaming. Now, uh, the types of perks uh, and, and benefits and opportunities, we will figure out with players directly. So what we'll do is we'll first identify based on player feedback. You know, we do regular streams um, to and regular game hunter uh, sessions uh, uh, to figure out uh, from feedback from the community what type of games they like, what their uh, what uh, game modes or genres they feel are missing, and then we will go search for those games. We will go talk to game studios and understand if the project is sustainable, if the team is quick and good at listening to uh, uh, you know community feedback, if there is a uh, incentive model in the game so that players, when they spend time and effort and energy in the game, have some way to uh, uh, earn from it, you know, receive some rewards for the value that they're putting into the game. And then after we talk to the studios, we will then negotiate uh, really great NFT packages that we can then pass on to our scholars. So once we secure these NFT packages, we will approach our scholars and we will help tailor the best games for each scholar. Um, for example, mm -hmm. some of our scholars are uh, nurses, very busy. And so the only time they have to play is like on a bus ride on the way back and from work or something. So they just want very short game plays, maybe five, 10 minutes each, uh, maybe no more than one or two hours a day. So we'll figure out that type of game, pair them with that type of game and help train them on how to play that type of game. Others, uh, we have some students that after classes, they like to spend six or seven hours each day playing games and they're very hardcore and competitive. Well then just as different uh, from like the nurse scholar, we will then help pair the right type of game for the student and there's everything in between. And so the perks that we offer is um, we will buy the NFTs for the scholar and then we will let the scholar play using those NFTs the earnings that they generate inside the game, we will then split with the scholar. And our scholars can make up to 70% of the earnings from a game, uh, depending on which game they play. And so that's kind of what we do and the different perks that we offer uh, both you know, our scholars um, and then specifically for game makers, uh, studios, we bring them a community of hardcore players who understand how to play, have been trained by us with content and scholar managers on how best to play, uh, and they're very, very active. Um, you know, if we onboard a thousand scholars, that's pretty much a thousand DAU because these people are uh, these scholars are playing every single day, um, and they understand the game better than most. And so they will be able to help teach other people in the gaming community or ecosystem how to play as well. Yeah, yeah, hands down. Yeah, Game Guild is the best play for rookies who want to play and want to earn handsome income with small capital, or even they don't have much knowledge about cryptocurrency because you know, whenever the skill invest, they have to like uh, research and do it carefully and strictly to guarantee the potential of the game. So yeah, and yeah. also for professional yeah, who want to play and invest, they can freely exchange their value and earn yield for their work, dedication, and time spent uh, in the game. So I think that's uh, it for... I okay. want to add up more information yeah. because for us, like Epic World is the team fight game. So that's mm -hmm. why for us, the good system is the one of important recipe to make the game, like the future of game successful. And the GUI should be up as the partner ecosystem of the blockchain game studio, where the developer and gamer can connect with each other directly to share the ideas, to contribute the feedback. And it's just like the decentralized version of Steam. Each of the scholar can get own kind of blockchain game and own the NFT game they want. And of course, the, the if they they are the good members, they can enjoy a lot of benefit, so that like the early access to the new blockchain game, exclusive gift from the game developers, game studio, 
or rebate system from game and or even the NFT trading card from the one-stop shop platform if the green app there's a the marketplace or even they can offer the lower transaction fee in uh, if they play the game something like that so that's why the game do is will be the futures of the game five second yeah yeah great yeah thanks for your add-in opinion so i think that's the end for the segment one so we can coming to the telegram question so earlier our team has picked three past questions from telegram user so um please have to shed the light on these uh, problems that our user are facing guys so uh let's start with um hi so from signy adaption is a headed challenge for every blockchain project so especially in this sensitive period of the whole market when many game projects were dead, seeing only few uh, people using their platform. So what are your strategy and vision on this problem? Okay. Thank you for your very great question, Sydney. It's very uh, interesting. So for us, we know the game five objective is to build a bridge between the blockchain and the mainstream users. So uh, to do that, GameFi has to build a sustainable ecosystem and uh, earn user trust. So we have several strategies and one of them, we want to make our game more playable. So it means like the best gameplay, high profit, convenient uh, use, fair mechanics, and very high security or good security. So that's why we are developing a product that will be more seamless user experience so for us the customer journey is very important and make game more fun than ever and beside of the multiple earning function etc and secondly we want to create a sustainable ecosystem which include the developers gamers um kol game queues they can we can build a whole comprehensive ecosystem like win-win benefit that meet own requirement from own side in the play and earn and the whole infrastructures. So basic, basically, game file should be designed for gamers and by gamers. So it's the new way for the community to make a difference in, the, in their favorite game. So for us, the player is more important factors. For example, the traditional game like DOTA2, TI, Dota TI competition, they use, they use the community to smart the two tournament, uh, tournament partners. And mostly like, like, or lead operation, you can see the TI or even international tournament, the price is always like more than 30 million, like super high. And it's make community excited. So nowadays, each year TI competition has become like one of popular esports even like for all the gamer traditional like even the officer they also spend time to watch it on twitch so by so i think by following esports crowdfunding mechanic game file should be built i should be like more engaged communities of the player and turn it into the self-rewarding ecosystem for the player for the fan and for partner to the like uh cooperation mechanic and make the user-centric design philosophy. So in summary, if GameFi pay attention to, not only pay attention to the financial attributes, but also they uh, focus more on the community and user side. So it will make the evolution, evolution of the GameFi second. So we want to retain our users and continue to develop the product in long term. So that's why we want to focus to build a product more sustainable and give the users more the game enjoyable and focus on the community development. Yeah, thank you. Your yeah, mood, your yeah, mood. I mean, you're mute. 
Oh my God, sorry. So, uh, because I don't know how to pronounce his name, so let's skip it. So I think this question is for Dan. So what do you think about playing games for a living? Is this uh, a good culture or a bad in the real world? Um, I see Guild game model is quite flourishing lately, but I still wonder how the Guild operate and make revenue. So what if the NFT overpricing compared to its real values? Mm, okay, no, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I, I think playing games for a living already kind of exists, right? Um, and it was really only this last 10 years that this became possible. Um, but in the last 10 years, you're starting to see more and more viable careers in the gaming industry as a player, uh, whether it's esports opportunities, competitions, maybe coaches. Um, but what it does is that's a very limited set of players, right? Like very few players can actually be professional esports players, just like very few people uh, playing basketball can be, you know, professional basketball players. But what Web3 allows is for that anyone that plays and creates value in a game. And that value could be social interaction value. That value could be, um, uh, you know, the, the play style or gameplay value, whether it's PVE, PVP, the value could be monetary. They contribute time and maybe invest some of their own money or tokens into a game to build something better. Um, but all of that value is now able to be extracted. And so I think <clears throat> being able to be rewarded <clears throat> for doing something that you enjoy. Um, and if you happen to enjoy gaming, now there's finally a way to um, receive some value outside of it. Because in the real world, you know, if I like playing basketball and I bought uh, a basketball hoop and, and a basketball and I didn't want to play anymore, in the real world, I can sell the basketball. I can sell the basketball hoop. I can sell whatever gear that I had for playing some sport, right? You never used to be able to do that in gaming but now you can so it's it's not like i'm playing there to earn something but it's be, because i'm playing and because i have put value into something and i've created something from nothing um, that i'm able to receive some sort of value out as well and this happens to be viable enough um, so that a lot of people can make this uh, a decent living just from the value creation that they have inside games and I so actually, I think that's a very, very good culture uh, because it opens up the opportunities for people around the world that maybe didn't have those great opportunities, either for work or uh, careers, et cetera, to be able to still do something they love. But because it's digitally, they're not constrained by the region that they're in. They can do it on a great level playing field with players all around the world, adding value together and then they'll be able to receive something for the value that they add in an even uh, playing field. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's flourishing because finally people are realizing uh, the opportunity of this. They realize the power of owning assets digitally. And, um, you know, I think it really is the future of gaming. Um, you know, so for guilds like us, you know, we are here to help ensure that the transition into Web3 is smooth. And then we are here to help people, players, overcome that initial hurdle uh, into Web3 via uh, the purchase of NFTs. And because of that, uh, we are able to share in some of the revenue and value creation that the players uh, uh, do create uh, on uh, their own behalf. Um, and that's how we drive revenue. And that's how come we've been so sustainable so far. Yeah, great. Yeah, great explanation for uh, this question. So uh, we're coming to the last question. Uh, it's for the, so from Vio Hinsler. So how does GameFi trend affect other trends? Will the emergence of a new trend like Metaverse or Web3 make GameFi trend abandoned? Yeah, so what should investors pay attention to when they, uh, when they invest in game?
for me the game fire and metaverse are kind of overlapping and we don't consider metaverse is different kind a different chain compared to to game fire you, you, you may consider metaverse a kind of super game or uh, some open game uh, world kind of that and from my uh, uh, point of view the uh, gaming yeah in including metaverse including other kind uh, like move to an other the most suitable use case for blockchain because you know beside DeFi, which is a kind of uh, a fundamental level i can see that only games uh gaming most suitable for 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 blockchain application because there are two main reasons first is that with game you have an internal economy and then you can use all the uh, blockchain primitives like uh, token for in-game currency like nft for uh, in-game uh, assets and items and and, and second because uh, i think game items are very valuable you know in traditional games also many game items like weapon like horse like heroes they are uh, very expensive and that's why they are very suitable for stored on a blockchain as nft items because blockchains is only useful for storing and managing uh, the 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 valuable asset it's not meaningful to use blockchain to store um, the regular information it's very expensive and slow so that's why i think gaming is the number one use case for blockchain technology and if blockchain technology uh, can uh, uh, be can apply into games i think blockchain technology is of no use that's why we still mm -hmm. Uh, belief in gaming in general and, and blockchain games in particular and i think in the next rally of bitcoin gaming is still the leading the wave that's what uh, I, i'm thinking of gaming and that's yeah. why at ic lab we we are heavily invest in gaming ecosystem including metaverse including uh, all the game supporting services yeah right yeah so uh that's the end of the segment three uh segment two so we come close to the most interesting uh segment the live chat questions so you guys can see that we have a lot of comments in the box chat so each speaker will pick randomly one question and elaborate on them so um just pick out the username and the question and you guys please drop your comment uh along with your telegram username so that we can ping you when you are the winners so you guys leave drop the comments mm, then um are you choosing questions uh sure should I, do you, would you like me to choose a question first yeah okay let me see how about um Wow, there's so many good questions. Um, okay, how about this one? Uh, how how do I how do I select or how do I let you know which question I'm choosing? Do you uh, want me just, just read it? The, name. the username. Okay, just the username. Um, uh, let's see, the username is. Demitrong, D-E-M-A-I-T-R-O-N-G. Um, and the question is, the recent GameFi is full of bad news, so users are no longer as popular uh, as original. Do you think this is a sign of short breath or a stepping stone for future development? Um, so 
So uh, I think what he's asking here is uh, there's a lot of bad news. There's a lot of FUD lately. Um, it's also because there was a lot of not that quality projects that flooded the market. Um, and is this does this mean that Game Five is just a very short lived hype, or is this just a pivot for the future? Um, and the answer I think is this is just part of growing pains. Like we're very early in this industry still. We're very early in the transition to Web3. And just now uh, you're starting to see an entire Web2 industry embrace Web3 because it's more native. Everything about gaming is more organically Web3 than Web2. That's why 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago in RuneScape or World of Warcraft, people were still selling and buying gold, selling and buying mounts and armor and everything. It's the same thing that's happening in GameFi now. But back then, there just wasn't a technology to facilitate that easily. Uh, and so it was much higher barrier of entry. And so I think <clears throat> what's happening now is in the growth stage, there's lots of new ideas. There's lots of different projects that will flood a market. That obviously means there's going to be a lot of projects that fail, but it doesn't mean the direction isn't right. What it means is people are trying to feel out, explore, and understand this new uh, world of opportunity. And this is just the way to mature the overall gaming industry into Web3. And so I think this is just a very small, short stepping stone to the journey of the entire game industry industry adopting web three there's three and a half billion gamers in the world um i think 90 percent of them are mobile and i think over the next 10 years you'll see a majority of that three and a half billion gamers transition to web three because everything just makes more sense being a gamer in web three yeah thank you thank you for your part for your answer so uh, let's skip to uh, hi. Yeah, did you have your own question? Yeah. Thank you. I got the question from Yasa. Uh, it's about uh, could you consider creating a community to benefit from esport reader and the game broadcast to on the game five platform? And can you be the successful as the community platform for gamers? So it's very like future question, but for us, uh, the power of the community is crucial to own the games. So for esports and the game broadcasting like uh, Twitch are becoming increasingly popular in the past few years, and uh, no doubt. But there is no currently no platform like that in blockchain industry, no available to allow player to make the money from their fan base. So the next generation of the eSport uh, blockchain platform will be the uh, blockchain based eSport and the game broadcasting platform that allow the like uh, eSport and other game streamer just like YouTubers or v blogger or TikToker to monetize their social media uh, content in the blockchain. So for the project like us, uh, with the we want to develop the strong uh, gameplays. So it will naturally attract the players, and we want to gather the communities and join our force, and they can live stream our game on own social media because right now we don't have any like live stream uh, broadcasting platform based on blockchain. And we can share the tutorials, uh, such as uh, how to play, how to earn, uh, et cetera. So at the present, the communities of the game, like many game five project have basically taken sharp and, but in the futures, it will target the high degree of the activity of the mainstream of the live stream in the futures. That's what we. That's what we think. Thank you. The last one. Um, so, hey, you have your own question. So I will pick a question from uh, from Nam Doan. Beside develop 
uh, bring game five into uh, a top launch pad and game hub uh, can you provide more clearly about the roadmap and pathway in the future i just want to to to, to say something about uh, the roadmap of game five so the the first thing you know the game five uh, is building and will release in in the in the very near future is the wheel hub so you know game five will provide an all-in-one discovery wheel hub for gaming and metaverse we will list a lot of wheels including ygc wheel five avocado and fast uh fast now and, and many others so user can discover uh, the insight about all the uh, wheels on the market and they will make uh, some uh, educated decision about which uh, will they uh, would offer them uh, some benefit and they, which uh, they should choose and secondly i think in in the future game five will offer a kind of my dashboard features where you can uh, you can manage all the game items from uh, many games across all the games in one place so you can see uh, the information about all the nft items all the tokens and the liquidity level the you know the estimated price for all the nft items yeah and uh, another thing is um, game five will introduce a game portal so uh, there will be a few games integrated in into the game five game portal and uh, another very important feature uh, is that it is kind of the technology but you know game five team is trying to to to, to research uh, on game data uh, analytics so we will provide you with a lot of insight about the games, including uh, the uh, information publicly available on chain, but we also provide many uh, insights we got from internal team or from the SDK we will build to embed into the games. So we will provide a lot of insights for, for gamers. And that's the, part of our uh, upcoming roadmap. Okay, thank you you guys for answering all the questions because uh, we have limited time. So I think uh, we have clarified many questions from Gamefly uh, audience today. So it's time to wrap up uh, today AMA. Uh, so once again, thank you so much guys uh, for your participation. I have a good draft today, so informative and nothing better than listening uh, and chatting with you guys. So, um, do you have any last word to share with the uh, community before um, ending this AMA? Uh, you can start with uh, Dan. Sure. I just wanted to say I'm, I'm really happy and honored to be here, guys. Uh, um, if you guys want to learn more about you know, YGG SCA, uh, feel free to check out our Twitter, uh, at YGG SCA. Um, yeah, or join our Discord. We would love to have you join our community and um, hopefully we'll see you in the metaverse. Yeah, so how about you? Hi. Yeah, so we just released our beta testnet and we are closing to the second phase of the testnet. So that's why we are very happy to be here and uh, understand more like how GameFi evolve in the futures. And definitely keep me look forward to continue to develop stronger because what doesn't kill us make we make us stronger, right? And mm -hmm. look to the like bright futures of the game five. So that's why um, with the support from the community, we believe the game five will become the next generation of the gaming industry. Yeah, thank you. And last but not least, mm, hey. uh, I just want to say that. Uh... Uh, thank you everyone for for listening today and i'm uh, excited to have a chance to discuss uh, all the game five 
you know, the game, blockchain game in general with uh, with uh, Dan and Hai, and I learned a lot from their comments. Thank you a lot. Yeah, so everyone don't forget to support us by a like, subscribe all our channels and not miss for not missing out any news and thank you so much for watching our live. So see you in the next AMA. Goodbye everyone. Thank you. Good Good night. Night. Bye. Good night. Good night.